Indian culture really speaks to the senses. Everything about it draws you in. The vibrancy of fabrics, the intricate art and architecture, the floating sounds of chants and mantras, and the wafting scent of spices. With over 4,000 miles of coastline, the Indian subcontinent is home to many diverse cultures, native and imported, modern and ancient, birthed over tens of thousands of years of human ingenuity. India is a place I've always been drawn to, more in a sense of a spiritual connection, or maybe even a sense of the curiosity for the unknown. Surfing in India really brought me back to my roots of why I surf. It's still so innocent and pure, and I thought, I just wanted to go to witness that. The ocean has always been a place for the men. They go fish at sea, and the women stay at home. And it's never been a place for them. So naturally, people are quite apprehensive about women getting in the water. They're worried about them getting dark because dark skin is looked down upon in India, let alone like enjoying themselves. It puts them at the same level and that's a very new concept here. There's such a big fear of the ocean in general. Overcoming all these things is quite challenging. I'm not saying that everybody thinks the ocean is a demon. Um, it's just that people have always been very scared of the sea. Not many people know how to swim. No one ever knew you could surf in India. And now that more people are finding out, I'm sure there's going to be a wave of change. I wanted to gather this group of women together because we're all travelers at heart. And we share a deep respect for nature and a love for humanity. And I figured, what better place to go than India? Lauren has such a gentle soul, and I love how committed she is to gender equality and women's empowerment. Liz is a strong, independent woman, and she has such a deep commitment to environmental conservation. Kate is so deeply committed to yoga and spirituality, and has an undeniable presence. And Ashita, she's passionate and gentle and strong and spiritual. So in a way, she is really just an embodiment of us all. I caught my first wave six years ago. I was smiling all the way to shore. I was just so happy. I was smiling all the way back home from the beach. And I was like, what? you know something I'd never experienced before and I knew I would be surfing for the rest of my life. Before coming to India I was most excited about spending time with five incredible women and seeing where our journey takes us. We would be together traveling through challenge and experiencing the ocean and how could that not be magical? It's really incredible to be around a group of women that are just so supportive and so encouraging. It's an amazing experience. Just to have their support, like in the water, they're always cheering and encouraging. It's, it's really nice. And I really do feel like we're all sisters. <laughs> See, sisters. My experience as a female surfer in India has kind of taught me to embrace both sides to embrace my femininity, but it's also uh, not just being a female in the water, but being a female even on the train or, or walking down the street has, has really instilled this sense of toughness and inner strength I didn't know I kind of had. I was so shocked to learn that India is ranked as one of the top five most dangerous countries in the world to be a woman. There are over a billion people in India and so maybe greater numbers of women face the threats of physical and sexual abuse. But that's not unique to India at all. Women in every country around the world face these kinds of dangers. Women in India are really facing this um, challenge of meeting everyone else's expectations before developing their own voice. After meeting all the girls, 
I've noticed that everyone is so free-spirited and that's something I've started discovering in myself as well because when you grew up in India once you hit puberty you're not allowed to be that same child anymore you kind of grow up too suddenly and I wish more women would feel like that you know would assert their independence and get to experience that liberation you know in whatever they do one of our greatest purposes is to really live out our highest truth our highest capabilities and I think that there's so many women who don't either have the opportunity to or don't think they can and by doing so in your own life you automatically give that inspiration to other people around you. The idea of feminism is about recognizing the dualism between men and women and it has to do with men and women recognizing that we all innately have masculine and feminine aspects to who we are and that that's a wonderful thing to be celebrated. Emmy is so passionate about service and she uses her nonprofit Beyond the Surface International to bring awareness to some amazing things that are happening in communities worldwide. First of all is the free education center for the school dropouts, children between 7 and 18 who drop out from the school system or never have been to school. We try to pick them up again and we try to uh, make them interested again in education and more in a familiar system where they feel uh, appreciated, uh, where they count, where the teachers have time for them. So these kids we get from the streets, we bring them to a centre where they get scholarships, like they get educational training, they get clothes, they get food, so we give them a warm place to come to and we teach them as well. So a lot of these kids, they come from really traumatized backgrounds, so they don't have a stable house situation. Here sometimes it's difficult to find a good job. Traditionally, everybody used to be a fisherman, but due to pollution and industrial fishing, like it's not so such a sure income anymore. Sometimes a fisherman, they would go out, they would come back with 50 rupees and they have to share it with 10, so there would be nothing. Everybody's living outside because even if you have the electricity, most of the children, they don't have a fan. So even if they have a house to go to, it's so hot, so damp, so humid, they don't want to stay there. So the children, they just prefer to sleep out on the beach and do their own little thing. So surfing days here, they're, they're really good. They give a good vibe, gives you a lot of energy. If you know their house situation, if you know where they come from, if you know which massive problems that they face, and then if you see them being really like a child, being happy, it's a really nice thing to see. Young girls, I think, often have a difficult time finding an outlet where they can feel really strong, and surfing is an incredible place to develop your strength. It is really special to witness the beginnings of Indian surf culture, which seems to be on the cusp of developing into something much larger than what we experienced. To know that the kids we met along the way will be the bearers of surfing in their country was really inspiring. I think that the ocean is such a great teacher because you through all sorts of different emotions. It's a great place to observe your thoughts and at the same time let go of them. Some of the most amazing adventures in travel happen spontaneously. That's just the nature of adventure and I knew there would be some element of that in our trip. Things that we couldn't possibly dream would happen. This whole experience has just been so unreal for me. In surfing in Manapad, I was with a crew of the most amazing female surfers and there comes this crowd of, I don't know, look like thousands of people watching us surfing. It was so amazing. You could actually see that the population in India and then the number of people in the water. So few of us in the water, but so many on the beach. And I think we really opened a lot of eyes. We all made the journey to India together and we ended up in a little town in the south of India called Manapad. And 
We had some amazing hosts who happened to live right across the street from the Monopod Women's Self-Help Group that's been running there for about 50 years. When we entered, there were two women sitting really peacefully. The Palm Leaf Society was initiated in the year 1957 by a local resident in Manapad. They have been exporting products which were we, uh, woven by the local women. The women there um, are very conscious of uh, and aware of um, being eco-friendly and uh, even though plastic is very popular now, uh, they continue to weave uh, products out of uh, the palm leaves. Plastic is um, non-biodegradable, which, which shows that even though they are illiterate, they are well informed. We just started talking to them and they were teaching us. And just, it just so happened, like, we asked them if they'd seen us surfing in the water the other day. And they were like, no, but we'd love to get in the water with you. And just to hear them say that, we were all so shocked. We were like, what? And it made me so happy to hear that they were so interested in going to learn how to surf and get in the water. So um, it was amazing. I was taken up by surprise when uh, Devi volunteered uh, to surf wearing a sari. Sari is a traditional uh, attire. It carries so much of importance and uh, the remark by Anne saying that she uh, was, is the world's only surfer in a sari <laughs> um, <laughs> and threw, threw actually light into the entire episode. It was their first time in the water and I just felt so happy that I, ha I got to share that moment with them and like introduce them to the ocean and the joy of it because you can literally see them go, go from being terribly afraid of the ocean to like overcoming their fears, losing their inhibition and then just like enjoying themselves and just being playful because as you grow up somehow you're denied that luxury and I think it was liberating for them and I'm glad I could be there to share that moment with them. I'm happy that the decisions I've made in my life and the way it's impacted my life is inspiring other people to go and pursue their own dreams. I think that's how I describe living beyond the surface. Sings. He's singing to you 
with a love so real, baby. I'll be on your side forever. There's no storm we can weather. Your salty tears are your snare. Thanks for watching. Hope you liked it. Keep it locked here on WSL for all the action. And don't forget to subscribe, watch more videos, and leave a comment below.